Microphone check one two. Hey yeah. Hey. Uh, how y'all doing? Yeah, I got these bitch. The bitch got a little latency, but how y'all doing? Yeah, I just pop up. Microphone check one two. What is this? How y'all doing? This part of the show is brought to you by Where is that can at? 
I can't say the sponsor, you know, you know. Well, they'll shut the nigga down for it, uh, anything, anything, I mean, anything. Uh, I better not put nothing up on it. I better just leave this bitch playing like this. How y'all doing? Who doing this like this? Ain't no script or nothing. Just get on this bitch. And, uh, yeah, I'm back on the mic. Uh, fuck that phone shit. Shit, I need to hear this shit. I don't spend all this goddamn uh, Spend all this goddamn money on this shit. How y'all doing? Hey, I want to let y'all motherfuckers know. Hey, it ain't too late. Let's hit the PPPP. Hey, everybody, scream out to me. PPPPP. That shit is me. What the fuck you mean? Shit. Because of my civil death sentence. Because uh, of that felony that I got fucking got. I got a fucking death sentence. So, uh, my services are no longer needed in this bid. What the fuck you mean? Shit. Man, we all should have hit that bitch. Racist, not so racist, Nazis, crackers, Jews, niggas, spicks, honkies, chinks, everybody. Uh, sand niggas, real niggas, fake niggas, white niggas, black niggas, rich niggas. Poor niggas, you all niggas. The fuck you mean? Huh? I ain't even start drinking yet. <laughs> Y'all like that? Aggravating that shit? Boy, when I first started doing it, they were like, Burr. but this motherfucker retarded or something? Imagine. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what this business is about. Man, I just pop up. Say I could just grab grab the Bible, <clears throat> book of commerce, and start reading the big filly. I burn every time, burn it down. <laughs> I'll burn Philly down. Burn fuck Rocky. Fuck his mammy. Fuck everybody. I know you can't stand it. I'm back. Hey, turn your shit down. Hey. But it's a hey, boy. I'm feeling this certain type of way, man. I'm man. I'm feeling. I'm get my man. I'm getting my black mambo on around this bitch, man. Capitone ain't seeing what, man. Capitone ain't seeing, <laughs> man. I see now, shit, man. I man when I was surfing the street, the YouTube street <clears throat> as a subscriber only man i see how them them channels them content creators i don't give a fuck if you got one video bitch, bitch you got a channel bitch you don't show your face man bitch you a content creator man fuck that man i feel a certain type of way man i'm in the league of my own man Capitone ain't saying none of this shit None of this shit. No. Man, they purposely keep a nigga, nigga like me. What? I'm a loaf and all that shit, man. I'm getting my 24 on, nigga. My black mambo, nigga. I stay in the uh, gym shooting them. Bitch, I stay in the war room. Man, I'm a, man, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to put the black map back up there. Huh? And I came so far and yet got so far to go. This. What? How y'all doing? Big Philly. God is supreme. Thank y'all. <clears throat> Lord Hill, what's up? Ryu, you, by you. Thank you. Thank you for the email. I looked at it. It looked like the first one you sent me, but. We ain't locked the goddamn door. Really? Come on now. Hey, um, y'all want to see some shit? Y'all want to see some shit? What I still had on my on my shit? Yeah, I show y'all what I. Y'all don't care. I don't care about none. Y'all don't want to be free. Y'all don't want. Y'all don't want to be free. Y'all want to. Y'all want to. 
I got this latency. Should I put on my, get my Minister Fred on in this bitch? No. Nah. In this bitch. How y'all doing? Man, you better go ahead. I done show for you around. Our, hey, all boyfriends, baby daddies, <clears throat> ex-husbands, all men that are around any women, we are nothing but chauffeurs. We aren't protectors. <clears throat> chauffeurs. Chauffeur, yo, yo, <laughs> your woman, your woman's, because I know there's a lot of Rolling Stones out there. <clears throat> Horn dogs. <laughs> Get your rolling stone on. <laughs> I think this is the right one. Man, y'all don't give a fuck about it. Y'all don't want to be free. For real. Dark a million in it, bitch. Robert Jones in it, bitch. Man, y'all like, share, and subscribe as y'all come in this bitch. Um, y'all don't want to be free though. I understand. Um, this is Jeopardy. No, this is the straw man. Now ask yourself, have you ever in your life signed your name in a capital letters, all capital letters? Of course not. Haven't you always used both? Upper and lower case to sign your name, huh? Haven't you? Huh? Yeah. Because of the standard rule of law governing the use of the English grammar, that the correct capitalization, capitalization of the proper names must begin with a capital letter and the rest of the name to be spelled in similar case letters yeah i'm just going on and on and on and on y'all don't give a damn about this man y'all don't give a fuck about y'all don't give a damn about nothing. nothing nothing like this huh i get it i get it trust me i Get it. How y'all doing? Man, I'm reading that, but I'm going to leave that right there for a little bit. This is the indigenous. I'm trying to get my Dan Rather on in this bitch. Huh? Welcome. Y'all could be anywhere in the world. I mean, anywhere with <laughs> the world. <clears throat> The world opening back up. Uh, them saying that y'all could go do what y'all doing. And there's going to be a lot of entanglements. I know y'all could be anywhere in the world with me. But with the world opening back up, I know it's going to be a lot of late night booty call. Uh, booty calls. Uh, entanglements in them. Nobody, everybody was <laughs> shut down last year, but the few that had the courage, uh, the balls, uh, the balls of horn dogginess, y'all trifleness, even when mastering them, uh, God in them, uh, the government told you to stay home. You Fateful entanglement, trifleness, late night bangers of other people's properties, the one night standish, even with the virusish that was out there. Shots out to y'all that still managed to get y'all entanglements on this. 21 gun salute is for you. You. You few that had the balls, uh, the sexual organs to entangle. Some of you have 
donated to pro population. <clears throat> A lot of you are going to have lust babies, not love babies, but lust babies. This 21 gun salute is for you. Y'all are real entanglementers. Y'all did not give a fuck about masks, rubbers, diseases, gangs around, or nothing. You had to get to the hole of your choice, <clears throat> hole or pole of your choice, and 21 gun salute. You have nothing. No, uh, Jada and Will have nothing on y'all. Y'all defied all laws of complyingness. This is for y'all. Y'all are harder than the would be gangsters. Why, oh, why is all of the hardest gangsters wearing masks, huh? You got your designer mask. Thought you was so hard. Thought you was so anti-government. Why is the gangs listening to the government? Why? I am asking myself, is the fucking Amish wearing masks? Did the fucking Amish ever wear a mask? I don't think so. Shots out to JJ the Enlightened One. Shots out to Dark Chameleon in there. He's still here. Let y'all light shine. Hey. Y'all want me to sing and shit? I will. I'll shut this motherfucker down. I'll get my Mariah Carey on a Christmas time and in it, bitch. You don't you make me. Um, it says your birth documentation, follow me, should be straightforward and transparent. However, it soon becomes the most complex and I mean the most complex, secretive, paper trail imaginable. This alone suggests a long history of corruption. You know what? You motherfucking right. This process involves a maze of secret trust. It's a secret society. All we ask is trust. No, in God we trust. No, in God they fraud, man. It's a pun scheme, man. The ones at the bottom, er, the slaves, the citizens, er, the Indians, whatever you want to call yourself. You ain't you. You working for them. All that work that you do, it ain't for you. It's for them. Huh? Come on, man. Let me go back and read this a little bit. And um, the modern, follow me, the modern. Oh, I didn't read the last. Uh, uh, the process involves a maze of secret trust and various parts of legislation focusing on claiming your in-state, your uh, estate. The modern birth certificate began as a settlement certificate issued in England in 1837 to officially record the poor. 
granting basic rights to benefits in exchange for recognition of their status as owned property, lawful slaves, known, also known as indentured servants and bondsmen. A child's birthplace was its place of settlement where its bond began. Thus, a settlement of equal to a voluntary slave plantation. The settlement is equal to a voluntary slave plantation. And the United States of America, as it stands, er, is a plantation. Planet Earth, er, plain, plan. It's a planned Stravag it's a planned participation upon us and since 1933 all New Zealanders have been required by statute to have a birth certificate and a tax identification number Good old social security number. Hmm. And this comes from New Zealand, but nothing is new under the sun. What happens there happens here. So it looks like when you... At live birth, you are born. Your mother autographs to establish that you are the holder of your estate in due course. But when you when see now this goes back to sacrificing your children and the old testament in them. So it was not wrong for Eve to bite off the tree of of knowledge which they turned into right or wrong good and bad but still out of right and wrong good and bad this this is bad you sacrifice your children when you trade in a live birth and a birth certificate a birth certificate is created by the state when it's traded you are cargo you are delivered you are birthed informant autographs as indicated that you have no parental holding of your estate Mother in the green. Next one. I'm I'm just gonna, gonna go down three. I'm at the second one. Mother gives maiden name, which indicates a bastard. Later stillborn on a registry. The register. After you traded it in, you are a register, signs your estate into probate and you become no the register signs your estate and you become a ward of the state this is why the psyopsness was given to i think my generation we call the early gist of it. hey go on and call them people own your people <laughs> they was He's slickly psyopsin taking paddling out to school because they needed a whole new generation to act the ass. Huh? They needed to fill them fucking jails back up. Huh? Register signs your estate into probate and you become a ward of the state. 
given a lawful name. A lawful given name is a privately recorded traditionally in a family name. Bible. That's what Noble said earlier. And it is true. Authorities, certain people respected that book of commerce and you could for many back then they could hide certain things in the bible because that bible was held sacred though that was few of the that was very few of the things that was legally held sacred name is corporized that's close to it a legal trade oh a hey, yeah a legal trade name is publicly registered, combining your given name and family names. Title, your given name. When it's in blue, corporation, trade name. I'm going to go down one more. Rightful beneficiary of trade name when it's in the blue unwitting <laughs> trustee of the trade name let's show you a little bit um i got this on pdf y'all don't want this shit yeah and this comes from this is cc wake up New Zealand. This is 17 pages, but I had this for a while. Um, peace, peace. Mommy Chula, what's up? Dark Chameleon again. K Smith 08 in this bit. How y'all doing? Um, no sense. My shit um, is running pretty smooth. Let me, let me get, let me um, put on the Put on something to watch some show and tell hey while i get the shit straight y'all listen to sister alma's son brother denzel i'll be right back thank y'all peace Je kent de naam, ey, kom uit de zaan, ey Praat je geen money, dat kan ik je niet verstaan, ey Fok niet met dorries, want die komen en die gaan, ey Ik doe mijn future brighter dan de volle maan, ey Dus daarom ben ik aan het zoeken naar die clothes nu Ik zoek geen meid, ik ben gefocust op mijn flows nu Voor frisse jongen, tegenwoordig kom ik vroos nu Maar shit, mijn moeder zag me lief voor in een bloos nu Ik moet het maken, dadelijk is het veel te laat voor die shit Ik zie het vaker, deze dagen zijn ze daar in de flits Die wij verwouden informatie, maar we gaven ze niks Met paranoia, deze tijden, nu vertrouw ik je bitch Ik zeg ze, laat me lonely, laat me lief voor lonely, ja Fuck a homie, want ik heb mijn brody, ja Hoef geen rollie, nee ik hoef geen rollie, na They don't know me, niggas they don't know me, na Laat me lonely Laat me lief voor lonely, ja Fuck a homie, want ik heb mijn bro die, ja Hoef geen rollie, nee ik hoef geen rollie, na They don't know me, niggas they don't know me, na Niggas sferen, ze zijn real, maar zijn de fakes en niggas Ik sluit ze buiten, vroeger liet ik al die niggas binnen Want als jij hebt wat zij niet hebben, gaan ze profiteren Mijn brat aan zijn, maar op een dag ga jij die dingen leren Heb het geleerd, heb het gezien, nu is mijn mind te focus Ik kan niet stoppen, ik moet pushen, zelfs als er geen hoop is Ik ben alert, want stiek om willen, mannen me zien vallen Ze weten van me, deze nigga die heeft grote plannen Weet niet waarom, als ze zien me als een enemy Dus daarom blijf ik scherp, ja, I better be Voor later kunnen zorgen voor mijn family Dat wil jij ook, dus nigga, zeg maar, why you mad at me? Maar je kan me vinden als je voor me checkt Ik zweer het voor die niggas, heb ik geen respect Fok je ziel verkopen, bro, jij geeft het weg En ook al wordt het langer lopen, wie ik neem die weg Laat me lonely, laat me lief voor lonely, ja Fok een homie, want ik heb mijn bro die, ja Hoef geen rollie, nee, ik hoef geen rollie, na Niggas they don't know me now Laat me lonely, laat me lief voor lonely, ja Fuck a homie, want ik heb mijn bro die, ja Hoef geen rollie, nee ik hoef geen rollie, na They don't know me, 
Niggas, they don't know me, nah Yeah, yeah, hold up. Let me find it. Ooh. All right. Um. Got so many. Um, fuck it. We're gonna ride out. Let's do it. Fuck it. Damn. How y'all doing? Thank y'all. felt so close to the possibility of disclosure. The Nephilim. The Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here at the fourth annual ConspiracyCon 2004 Memorial Day weekend. Appreciate that you're here. Most of you were here this morning when I made a few announcements about how many of our presenters are solution oriented. And the person you're about to see is just such a person. He is going to be provided with a introduction uh, honored today by Jordan Maxwell, an uh, associate and friend of ours here at the conference. And uh, again, about solutions. Look at that symbol right there. Um, might look a little bit familiar. And uh, I don't use that symbol by accident, and neither is our next presenter, uh, who is also an associate and good friend of Jordan Maxwell. Jordan, some of you know, has spoken at this event and others like it. And I thought it would be appropriate for Jordan to provide a little bit of a hidden history lesson as to what has happened to our country, what has happened to this planet, what has happened to our legal system, our financial system. He is um, very knowledgeable about secret societies, symbolism, fraternal orders, all the things and elements and groups that are behind what has happened. And I couldn't think of anybody better to introduce our next guest. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Jordan Maxwell. He will be up here for about 15 minutes. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here with us today. Um, a lot of kind words have been said about me, but I want to clarify a few things. I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. I never have been. I'm not now, nor will I ever be. I'm too smart for that. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how much I don't know. And I'm learning every day that I live, the world keeps opening up larger and larger. And I started this... Um, <laughs> escapade back in 1959. I started talking to audiences in 1962 about secret societies, the New World Order, occultism, and it was in 1966 that Anthony J. Hilder produced his first record set with Myron Fagan on Illuminati. 
and it was Anthony J. Hilder and Myron Fagan who introduced into American society the idea of secret societies and the Illuminati. So when you hear the concept being discussed by anyone of secret societies, and especially that word Illuminati, remember it was Anthony J. Hilda who introduced it, and the man who talked about it, Anthony actually produced the records, and it was Myron Fagan, a very important man that you need to know about who's no longer with us. Myron Fagan was Myron Herman Fagan was the man who introduced the idea of Illuminati. As I said, I was talking about these subjects back in 1962, before most of the people who now talk about it were even still in school. So consequently, I've, um, I've looked at many different areas of conspiracy since that time. And I'm appalled at uh, what I see happening in this country today. We are told that America is the land of laws, a nation built on laws. In point of fact, nothing could be further from the truth. America is run by people who are lawless. We have no law in America. And understand that. The law is whatever the powers that be in power happen to say it is today. Whatever they say it is, that's what the law is today. And it may change tomorrow. So what you need to understand is this is not a nation of laws. It's a nation of lawlessness. And somewhere along the line, we're going to be dealt with by that universal God force because of what we have allowed to happen in our country. Now, in relation to the subject today, which is the occult world of commerce, let me give you a couple of examples of why I think where you need to start thinking. If you uh, are going to send a box through the mail and you need to wrap it with some rope, you go out in the garage and you find some, some rope and tie up the box, and that should be sufficient to do the mailing. But if you're going to take that rope out to the edge of a 10-story building and hang on it. You better trust and you better examine the integrity of that rope now because your life hangs in the balance on it. Another example is if you owned a two-story building and you were going to put a lot of weight on the second floor, if you were, if you were smart, you would go downstairs first with the structural engineer, get on a ladder, and go up through the ceiling tiles and examine the floor that you're going to put that weight on to see if the floor is going to hold that kind of weight. So what you're doing is you are standing under the foundation you're going to build on. You're standing under to get understanding because that's where the word understand comes from, to stand under the foundation that you're building on. <clears throat> Understanding words is what you really need to start doing. You need to start doing your homework and understanding words. If you put an S in front of words, it becomes swords. And that's what words are. They're cutting. They can cause you great trouble. Humans are word control creatures. So we need to establish what words mean. Again, when we talk about law, there is a Roman maximum in law that says, for he that would be deceived, let him simply meaning if you are so ignorant as to be deceived, then that's your business, that's your problem. So you need to do your homework and find out what the words mean, especially in relation to law and government, because there is a whole a world of occultism that is operating today throughout the world in which you use certain words, and when those words are used in a court, they don't mean the same thing at all. Understanding law 
and the words of law, there are two things that this planet has. Water and earth, water and land. Consequently, there are two kinds of law. The law of the land and the law of water. You've heard the term, term law of the land. But in point of fact, that's precisely what this word means, law of the land, because it is the people who live on land. And that is opposed to something else called the law of the high seas or the law of water. You need to understand the difference. The law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on the land. And so consequently, the law of the land is different in every country. You can do things in America you can't do in Russia. You can do things in Africa you can't do in England. So the law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on that particular land. However, there is a higher law that dominates the entire world. It's called the law of the water or the law of the high seas. The law of water is referred to as the law of money. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you're from, or where you live. Money is money. And any time you're doing banking or using money, you are now under the law of water, maritime admiralty. If you go back in history, in ancient history, where all of this began, back in the land of Cana, and I've heard, you probably have heard in the Bible, the land of Cana. The Canaanites were Phoenician, Phoenician bloodline. And in the ancient Phoenician language, Cana meant merchant banker. The very word merchant comes from mer, M-E-R, for the sea, for water. As a mermaid, we have merchant. Merchant bankers. Let me give an example of the difference between the law of water and the law of the land. The law of water, as I said, is a law of banking, money, as opposed to the law of the custom of the people or the law of the land. Um, the Statue of Liberty must be put in water. It could not be put on American land as such. It had to be put in the harbor because it's not the Statue of Freedom. It's a Statue of Liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port on a ship. He gets liberty. He's not free. So America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're not free or brave, period. We're not free. This is not a free country. Now, let me give you an example of how this law of the water works. Why is it that you have to go to court? People are always concerned about going to court. You go to court because you play basketball and tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? <laughs> that's what it is. It's a racket. <laughs> and make no mistake, they do not pick words by chance. These words are very serious. They do not use words in terms... Um, with no avail. These words are very important. When you go into a court, what's the idea of going to court? It's a game, like basketball. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. Uh, one team gets up and they throw the ball over to that team of lawyers. That team gets up and throws the ball back into their court. And consequently, it's a ball game. And the judge is wearing a black robe, so he is the referee. The judge is the referee. He doesn't care which side wins or loses because he's going to get paid anyway. So he couldn't care less. He's merely there as a referee, and that's why he wears a black robe. And that's another interesting subject we can get into later. But the judge is a, is a referee between two teams. The judge, said, we are told, rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin is a bank. Therefore, the judge rules for the bank. Where do you find banks? You find banks on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. And what does a river bank do? 
it directs the flow of the current C. The juice. Consequently, your money is current C because it's the flow, the cash flow. And I'll give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, all ships are referred to as female. Airships, rocket ships, sailing ships are always female. Why? There's a very good reason. Maritime Admiralty Banking Law says all ships are female because uh, they're carrying items. They're carrying items for money. And so consequently, they are under Maritime Admiralty Law. Admiralty is where we get the word Admiral, Admiral of the Navy. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls So that's kind of saying, would that be with the supposed slavery? All those ships, you heard them, all commerce ships, all ships that sail those seas are female. I ain't going to talk your head off, but let's try to put Let's just try to listen and see if we can fill in some of these blanks. But he just said that all ships are females. Thank y'all. Sister Soul, the many countless other, the nine uh, that has the heart. She said, it's the marking of the woman that gives birth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk about it by 15 seconds. Say, Bill Cooper wrote behind the pale horse exposing, exposing the same thing. Yeah. Um, this, all of this information is going to come from the Europeans, because this is what it was designed for. And they had issues with it. Yeah, slavery was a choice. You either do something about it or take it. But I'll get back to it. Thank y'all. Let's get it. pulls into a harbor, it parks at the dock, and it ties off at the dock. The captain has to provide for the um, port authorities a certificate of manifest because yesterday the ship was not here. But this morning the ship pulled in, so it has manifested. So consequently all the products, the $800 million worth of TVs or Toyotas, have manifested. So each one of those items coming off of that ship has come off of water. And each end, they has come in a ship. And consequently, on a ship, all ships have a captain. The word captain comes from a Latin word, capital, money. So the captain represents the money that's on board the ship. And as I said, the captain has to present to the port authorities a certificate of manifest. For each and every item, how much does it weigh, what color is it, how many doors does it have, etc. And consequently, the captain presents a certificate of manifest. The ship is sitting in its berth. Wherever a ship sits when it docks is called its berth. She sits in her berth, birthing a ship. Consequently, all the items, as I said, coming off that ship represent money. They came in on water. They are maritime admiralty product. And this is true all over the world. Now, when you were born, your mother's water broke. And when your mother's water broke, you came out. 
And this is why you have to have a birth certificate because you are a maritime admiralty product under international law. You are considered, your body is considered a maritime admiralty product. Your mother delivered you. This is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator, they will ship it to you. They will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime admiralty. You came down your mother's birth canal. And once you, uh, and as you're taking one of the, uh, of the television, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tell them the right way. The birth hole. <clears throat> the birth hole. Imagine. I ain't gonna run, y'all. All of this delivery room. Delivery, delivery. Uh, look at the stork <laughs> in the fucking cartoons delivery <laughs> delivery room in the ward <laughs> delivery ward let them slaves manifest to be wards of the state uh, wards of the country huh let's get it for them 13, man, like, share, subscribe this shit. Who doing this? <laughs> Thank y'all. Visions are the cars off the ship and it falls down and breaks. Uh, that's all right. Sometimes they're stillborn. So consequently, you've lost money on that one. Therefore, you have to have a death certificate. And it's always signed by the doc. The doc has to sign your birth certificate and your death certificate. All of these words and terms are maritime admiralty banking words. And therefore, so doc, doc, indoctrination, commerce, doctor, commerce. Dr. Bill Cosby <laughs> indoctrinated niggas to go to black colleges and for males to be indoctrinated to shake their little booties. Now, the different world, you know that's bad. Psyops, how good was the Cosby show in them? Huh? What did the Cosby show inspire? The, the doctors were no killers. I know the doctors, all of them doctors to become doctors who went to nigger colleges. Uh, that was mostly in the South. Uh, them niggas, uh, because of Bill Cosby, uh, led the way to step and fetch and shake their little booties tightly hugged up together. Imagine the 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 doctrination i know it's too it's it's too much to bear it's a different world from where you coming from you know follow me i'm gonna try to get to that i'm gonna let this bitch play because this is like an hour i want y'all to see this and then remind me it's a different world <clears throat> He told you, no, uh, Debbie Allen, she helped produce that. Said it's a different world 
from where you coming from, from where you coming from. Remember that? One of you with that last, hey, you motherfucker, this is a different world. Shit, you motherfucker gonna have to drum line, <clears throat> come line in most, <clears throat> in some cases. One of you, hey, these rituals are <clears throat> hazing from where you coming from. It's a different world. Hell yeah, it's different. Shit. It's a different world from where you coming from. <laughs> Said, I remember that. That shit came on. <clears throat> I liked it. Dwayne Dwayne and Whitney and them. Sinbad and them. All them was on there. Came right on after the Cosby show. See? Howard or whatever. Whatever fictional HBCU. I know. I'm losing them. Let me get back. <laughs> you rather you rather hear it from a honky than me. All right, let's let me take it. Therefore, if you understand lawyers I'm sorry. and Forgive judges me. and courts For and government, Coppertone knows are not, but he does international maritime admiralty law. All religions, all churches in the world operate under and hold up and vegan said shots out to greedy vegan but he said howard is in the middle of ghettos of different housing projects and shit man fuck that can't be a place of higher learning shit yeah i guess higher man shit you seeing crackheads on on the way to uh crackheads asking to cut the glass up at Howard. Crackheads asking to wash the cars at Howard. Crackheads breaking into cars and classrooms and all that. That shit ain't safe. The fuck? They got Brad and them going to Yale all often prestige safe places. And just uh, imagine how many people done got uh, Raped, robbed, and killed. All, you might as well say, the projects uh, that surrounded Howard University are, are property of Howard. Uh, let me get back to it. The fuck? That's wild. Hey, all of that in D.C., uh, the fucking capital rat a couple blocks down from a trap that's booming, nigga. Say Wayne Perry was a Michael Jordan and that shit. Man, they they let that boy run like one wild like that. What? The Michael Jordan of murder? This nigga hitting drive by with his tongue hanging out, huh? They had to get that nigga off the street. The fuck you mean? Man, this shit, man. America, the home of psyops. <laughs> the fuck out of here the man time law Damn. this is why all churches are divided into denominations like 20s and 50s and hundreds serious this is why they're called denominations because all churches are nothing more than the product of maritime admiralty banking it's an extraordinary story of a cult uh treason uh, hold up, hold up, man. I can't resist. You see that? I told you. This fucking church that's a few feet from me is a fucking trust fund. And the fucking minister is a community church uh, commerce leader. Umar Johnson was right. Grandma, black money go into that black church and go into a white bank. Can the church say, imagine? The fuck? Huh? All churches in God we trust. No, it's in God they fraud. Because the God you think 
is an all caps God, huh? That God, the government, uh, the government shut the church down for nine weeks and most churches had church in the field making Kanye and no, oh, it didn't come. They had church in the wild. They was wildin', huh? Got morning dew on your penny loafers in them because that same church was having church in a field that they bought. They was never going to do nothing with it. Nothing. But they found something to do with it. They had drive-by churching. And because of Creflo Dollar, Trap Star Dollar, Holla, church appin is at a all-time high next to cash appin. The fuck you mean? Huh? Who doing this? high treason and crimes against the state. Make no mistake about it. There has never been a country on the face of the earth as far back into history as you can go. There has never existed a country in which the people rose up and demanded their right to be free. Never. The concept of human, spiritual, intellectual, and physical freedom is a totally uh, concept that has never, ever existed on the earth. The only time that it has ever come into existence was the founding of this country, where it was understood that we were sovereigns and we owned our bodies. And consequently, since 1868, we're now on the International Maritime Admiralty Law. Think about this. When cowboys and in Indian movies, when the cowboys would ride into town, they get off the horse, they were wearing guns. How come they could walk into a bar carrying guns? And if two guys got in an argument, they could go out on the street and draw on each other in front of the sheriff's office, and the sheriff would do nothing. How come? How come that men could go out in the street and shoot each other in front of everyone and had nothing be done about it? The reason why is because before 1868, all Americans were considered sovereigns. And that's one of the nice things about being a sovereign, is you have the right to be yourself. And consequently, you need to understand that in one last point I'm going to make before I introduce your speaker, that in 1868, there was a corporation founded, and uh, anyone can incorporate a company. Well, in 1868, there was a company incorporated. And in that particular company, the founders of that company called it, they referred to it as the United States Corporation. And they stipulated that anybody who would be a member of that corporation or work for that corporation would be called not an employee, but a citizen. So today, if you are asked, are you a citizen of the United States? What you think you're being asked is, are you lawfully in this country to do business? That's not lawfully what's being asked. They didn't ask you if you were in America lawfully. They asked you a specific question. Are you of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying that you are a citizen of the United States? Because in that way, citizen of the United States means you are an employee of a foreign corporation operating on international maritime law. So today, the president of the United States is the president of a privately owned company. The company is called United States, and the word president is always a word that is used in corporate law. Banks have presidents. All companies have presidents. So there's a corporation called United States, privately owned, and it has a president. President Bush is not the president of America. President Bush is the president of a privately owned company, privately owned, out of England. And you need to understand words and terms. Because I believe that there is a divine presence in the universe that men call God. And one day that divine presence is going to move on the earth and we're going to see freedom come back to this world. And when it does, you're going to need to understand words and terms and how they have been used to trick you. And that's the, 
the speech that today I'm introducing Jason Whitney to give you some ideas about how these words have been used to enslave you. And with that, I'd like to introduce my friend, Jason Whitney. Hello, everyone. I'm going to just uh, restart the computer here. Um, there's a lot to cover, and I'm uh, going to go pretty quick. And some of the stuff that we're going to go over is, in essence, a reiteration of some of the uh, concepts that Jordan presented to you. So, um, but we're going to give them with visual examples so they hopefully give you a better mental anchor. Um, so when you see this stuff come up, if you should ever, you know, uh, get involved in a situation where you unfortunately have to go to court, you understand the name of the tune. And um, it, you'll find out at the end of all of this today, it's just business. Um, I, I was first... Uh, introduced to Jordan Maxwell approximately three and a half years ago. Uh, I was up late at night, and it was about 3 o'clock in the morning when my girlfriend had uh, said, hey, you got to listen to this guy. And um, I was doing homework. I was originally a computer science major uh, studying network engineering. And I set my books aside, and I walked over to the uh, table, and I flipped on uh, the channel so I could hear the radio in the room I was in, and I heard this guy talking. And the information was so powerful uh, that was being presented, I was absolutely uh, blown away. I went and grabbed a notebook, and I started taking notes because, you know, I, I was, I've been into the occult since I was about 18, and I've studied uh, mostly uh, stuff on, you know, basic secret societies and, and uh, pyramidology and the concepts of some UFO ET stuff. But what Jordan presented on that radio show put the entire world system, whether it be religion, banking, or politics, or UFOs and aliens, and the concept of you know the alien ant farm, which is Earth, all into a construct that, that I could basically see with open eyes, kind of like the Matrix uh, revelation. And um, you know, if it wasn't for Jordan, in any capacity, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, certainly. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, my, myself and a collective group of people that have uh, become researchers, and I'm, I, I like to consider myself, in essence, you know, a, still a neophyte because I'm not an expert on anything like Jordan. However, so many researchers that we have come into contact with have been facilitated into this particular paradigm as a result of Jordan's research. And um, like I said, in my, my particular opinion, Jordan is truly the godfather of occultism. So I'll just wait for this uh, machine to boot up here so I can get to the, uh, the good stuff. My uh, presentation in part is predicated upon uh, the images. But anyways, the, the world of admiralty that we're going to um, talk about today is it's a concept and it's a philosophy. Um, the, what the system, uh, Jordan explained that there's two kinds of law in the world. There's civil law and there's the law of water and money. Well, we, we have our common law system where collective groups of people come together and they agree to, to follow particular behavioral patterns. However, the banking system or the, the banksters or gangsters or whatever you want to call them have collectively through thousands of years have set up a situation where they can manipulate people to superimpose a, um, a legal system that is not based entirely on law, it's based on commerce. And so this, this artificial let's pretend construct has basically been superimposed over our uh, law of our land. And as we'll get into it, um, I'll explain that, or I'll, I'll try to demonstrate further that um, we are not operating in a common law system anymore, although the common law is still here and we need to understand how to access it and how to use it to our advantage. But most people, unfortunately, are so ignorant of what the law is or what the codes are or the, what the statutes actually say and how they particularly apply to them. They just are used to functioning in a consensus reality that, oh, well, you know, at 18 or 16, everyone gets a driver's license and 
you know, when I work, everyone uh, fills out a 1040 IRS tax form or because he said or because your parents said or because your parents were particularly indoctrinated in a, in a system where everyone is function, functioning perpetually in this let's pretend game. So uh, we're going to go over a couple things here uh, really fast. Um, this presentation, like I um, said earlier, uh, it's dedicated entirely to Jordan Maxwell because this is his work, just reiterated in a new light uh, with my own particular spice um, overlay. So again, thanks again, Jordan. Um, so interestingly enough, this ship or the ships of the high seas in commerce, if you get back to, you know, ancient Europe, uh, the, the merchant vessels that transported goods and services and commodities and product to make money were called revenue cutters. Okay, it's just a term. Not too significant, but the whole system is set up about one thing, money, because the banks um, and the, th the banks through their politicians and legislational system, it, they set up a body of laws to further extract money or set up a system that money is always flowing up. It's being extracted out of your bodies, out of your sweat equity, out of your label, labor. So the whole thing is, is based about one thing, commerce. Okay, Jordan said in the ship, um, you know, when a ship is pulled into a dock, it's docked, and we go back to what happens when a, a ship pulls into a dock, it has to present a manifest, you know, a certificate of manifest. It's really simple, it's all about forms. Everyone ever see uh, that movie Brazil? Okay, the, that's pretty much the system we're operating in today, if you get, take a closer look at it. So you have a certificate of manifest, and it just describes all the property that's on the ship. Ship sits in its berth, as Jordan mentioned earlier. There you go. The mother, and, and this, the system that we operate, if you understand Admiralty, it's a very esoteric system because the, the banking has been operating longer than 6,000 years, probably longer than uh, recorded history, longer than the Code of Hammurabi, et cetera. But the mother, the mother is a vessel, or all of us are vessels because and this is a philosophic esoteric point, but our bodies are a warehouse and you live within the confines of your skin if you take the concept that you're a spiritual being. Okay, okay so it's an energy vessel. So the mother is a vessel delivering a, um, a product, swimming down the rivers of the, uh, the birth canal, and uh, you know, it's delivered to the dock or the dock door. And what is it? It's delivery of a human resource because that's all we're considered humans. We're human resources. And, you know, you get a birth certificate to, to vouch for that. It used to be that, you know, if, if a child was born in a common law society, you know, collective society, you know, they recorded in the Bible or some sort of, you know, official records, etc. But everything is about certi certifications or a B stroke six, like in Brazil, you know. So um, certificate of live birth. And we're talking about money. You're a human resource. So what is money? It's energy. That's all it is. The, the system is set up that it's the control and flow of energy from generally the bottom up, the basis of the foundation of the people up into the hands of the bankers that further perpetuate and dictate more laws to further ext extract money. And we'll demonstrate this in just a moment. So battery. Um, is uh, pretty much what we're considered. If anyone has seen uh, the Matrix, you know our bodies or our vessel. It, it it's where we store the energy. We eat food. Its energy is transmuted from the sun, goes up the food chain. If you study biology, and it's and the energy is stored in our fat cells. Well, take another um, take a look at this. A nursery, in essence, if we're talking to the world of Admiralty and the ship pulling into the dock and getting the port, uh, coming into port, and we're getting all this paperwork, and it's all about money. The nursery is an energy farm or a monetary farm. It's a production house, kind of like the Matrix, you know. So we're going to go into um, some definitions from the Law Dictionary, what these terms mean. Jordan says we need to take, take a look at words because we're uh, word-controlled people, right? And I'm, obviously, I'm not making any of this up. If you look in Ballantine's Law Dictionary, 
a human being is a monster. So that's what, you know, when you walk into court, this is how they're looking at you. So you want to get your constitutional rights. You know, you want uh, your liberties, not your freedom, but you want civil liberties. Well, they're working with this guy. How does that apply to you? So let's take a look at what monster says. A monster is a human being by birth, but in some part resembling a lower animal. A monster hath no inherent blood and cannot be the heir to any land, albeit it be brought forth in marriage. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Are we talking about a human being, which is in the law of admiralty or the law of banking, we're talking about a let's pretend game. Limited liability, no one taking responsibility for their actions. Um, that's why we live in a corporate fascist system where everyone wants to incorporate and not take responsibility for what's going on. And this guy over here, the real you that's aware and functions in, in like a state of common law where it takes personal responsibility for everything he does. And, uh, you know, will make, make his wrongs right and everything. This guy, it's, it's on a piece of paper only. That's the certificate of live birth. That's the, the B stroke six. That's the let's pretend. When you book with Expedia, you don't have to go all by Like a great companion, the Expedia app has your back throughout your journey because it matters who you travel with. Click to download today. Endgame. So if the, the construct that is law has two kinds of people. You know, in, in fact, the spiritual being isn't it. You won't find a spiritual being in a law dictionary, but you'll find the definition of a person. But peculiar enough, the definition of a person, they try to get you caught up with a natural person. But how do you define a word with its own word? Isn't that, that's a peculiarity in itself. So person includes a natural person, a firm, a co-partnership or an association or a limited liability company or corporation. The entire essence of the Let's Pretend game is to get you to be one of these things, a corporation functioning in, in a state of fascism in a limited liability uh, world, a Let's Pretend game, where no one takes responsibility for their actions. So we get into the construct of what the physical world versus the legal world is. You have the world of land, which they try to superimpose this matrix body over, of the world of admiralty. Um, in the Constitution, which is predicated upon common law, we deal in the world of uh, gold and silver. What happened to that, guys? You know, now we're dealing with Federal Reserve notes, which a note, by definition, is evidence of a debt. And anyone heard of national debt? Yeah. Or how about income tax? You know, all income tax does is go to pay national debt. It doesn't pay the streets. It goes to pay the national debt with the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve came into act in 1913. And, and that, that's a whole story in itself. And the taxes that are generated as, as a result of using Federal Reserve notes, uh, who collects that? The IRS. When were they started? The same year as the Federal Reserve, 1913. But guess where the, Fed, uh, the, the IRS is based out of, guys? Puerto Rico. It's not even an agency of the United States government. You know, it's a, that's a whole story in itself. So we have consciousness over here in the physical realm, but the legal realm, it's completely devoid of consciousness. We have present or represented. You ever hear the term in court, you're represented, or you're, you need an attorney to represent you? Because we're playing in the let's pretend game over here. And when you're dealing in the world of the physical, you have lawful. In the legal realm, in the world of statutes and codes, we have legal. And again, real versus fiction, substance versus reflection. We have the real thing, the real essence of substance, or we have the thing named. And we also have the creditor, or we have a debtor, a lender or a borrower, object versus symbol, the physical body, or a paper certificate, such as a birth certificate. So in essence, who you really are considered to be legally is a fiction. A concept or idea expressed as a name, a symbol that, that legally has no consciousness. It is a juristic person. It's in legis. It's a, it's a word written on a piece of paper. It's not you. You see, when we're dealing in real law, when there was a controversy between people in society, um, in, in like a tribe or a community, if there was a problem, 
it was, you know, someone would come up to the elders in society.